Do you feel like you would want to make art, but there is never enough time to actually do it? I used to feel that way all the time. I thought the reason I wasn't making any art was because I was working full time and on top of that I was also teaching concept art. So when would I even have time for my own paintings? Now that I'm working for myself, I feel like I have even more work, but somehow I still manage to paint way more than before. So if you want to get those paintings finished, I'm going to explain the tricks I use to squeeze time out of nowhere and get these creative ideas out of my head and on canvas. And that's how I was able to create this whole YouTube channel while doing all this work. That's all the proof that I think I need to show that this actually works, because Art might take time, but YouTube videos take way more time. And somehow now I have time for both. I know that this first part is going to be really annoying and I just want to apologize beforehand. But the most important change that I made was to buy an iPad. Honestly, I would love it if the most important part of this video wasn't about buying an insanely expensive piece of equipment. But no matter how I look at it, being able to paint in more places has been the cornerstone of my creative productivity over the last four years. And it wouldn't make sense not to mention it in this video. The thing is, the reason for me to buy an iPad didn't have anything to do with productivity at all. To me, just the act of sitting down in front of my PC and opening Photoshop just felt so much like being at work that honestly I just wanted to paint on my couch without all the PTSD kicking in from my work burnout that I was going through back then. Now I know that this is not a glamorous reason, but it's the real one. I was too stressed to paint like I was painting at work, so I needed to kind of separate my hobby and my work somehow. It was an imaginary line that I drew in the sand, but I was trying to save myself, so I'm not gonna apologize for that reason. And the strange thing is that it worked in more ways than one. I was able to paint on my couch and it honestly did feel like me time instead of working. That helped me back into my own creative habit and over time I started working towards becoming a freelancer. Because of that I started taking on way more projects besides my normal day job. So I was working more hours but I still wanted to hold on to the momentum of making my own paintings as well. Because my work commute was almost an hour long, I started by using my work commute train rides to paint. Then I found out these smaller tricks. If I carried the iPad bag in my hand, I wouldn't need to take the bag out of my backpack before starting to paint. This might sound like I was saving just seconds, but over time this has a bigger compounding effect on the time that I got to spend with my creativity and making those paintings. Back at the office, if I was waiting for a meeting to start, I would use that little bit of time to paint on my iPad if I wasn't at my desk working. I started taking my iPad everywhere. Like for example, just going out for a lunch, I would paint while waiting for the food to come to the table. This is kind of awkward to confess, but Honestly, there were a lot of work parties and launch parties that I kind of find a bit boring. Honestly, it's just a bunch of developers getting drunk and I always felt like an outcast in those situations. But I had to go because you have to be part of the work community and blah blah. Anyway, because I had my iPad there, I was always painting, like even in bars, if it was a boring party, I would be painting. I think the real advice here would be that don't go into a bar if you don't want to go into a bar. Just like go home and paint something. If it's not your work to be in a bar, if then go home. I could go on, but at this point you probably get it. I was taking my iPad and painting absolutely everywhere. Long flights, ferry rides, stuck in a traffic, always me painting on my iPad. That was the thing that I enjoyed doing in those days. These moments that eat up so much of our lives are everywhere if you start looking for them. And they don't have to be boring, they can be exciting moments, at least for me, when I was able to get my small monster designs done or finish a roof to one of my environments. I always felt like I was making progress towards my own goals and I got to spend time in my own worlds. I didn't suddenly make the days any longer, but they started to feel more meaningful because I got to spend more time doing what I love and I was able to make paintings that felt like meaningful work to me. But the real benefit for me personally was I started doing this in the middle of a burnout. I was so exhausted because of my work felt like it was taking 
all the energy out of my life and I didn't have any energy to give to creativity. This way, as I was painting during the days, I suddenly started remembering what happened during those days and the days started to feel like distinctly different kinds of days. When I was just constantly working, I didn't even notice weeks or months going by. I couldn't tell you anything that happened during those months because I was just in this blurry work tunnel. All the days seemed to blend together. But on the days that I got to make some of my own art, even if it was just a little bit, I remember those moments much more clearly because making art was always the best thing in my day. Just to be clear, when I'm saying that I felt like I was doing meaningful work. I'm not saying paintings like these should be meaningful to everybody, but they are to me. The reason I was able to make this change happen at all was because I made my art a priority. For that to happen, I needed to love and appreciate my own art. After all, I was willing to draw and paint in like really awkward places, and that wouldn't have happened if the reason wasn't more valuable than the feeling of awkwardness of painting in public spaces. And I know that painting in public spaces is always like super awkward, but I promise if you just keep doing it consistently, at some point you just stop caring that other people might be watching, because usually they don't care. I kept finding these small pockets of downtime in my days and treated them like opportunities to just breathe and live my own life because I felt like I was committing my life to my work and my office job didn't feel in any way meaningful to me. People often say to me that they would make art if they had the time. I don't think those situations where people say this to me are a good opportunity to talk about this. In those moments, I always just nod because I was in that place as well. However, I don't think a lot of those people are ready to hear that the only way to make that change is to completely change your relationship with your creativity. The secret to all this is that you can't think of art like some extra work that you just add on top of your already full list of chores and duties in your day. Art needs to be a reward, and it needs to be a secret getaway between the mundane tasks that you get to enjoy. If you can make that happen, you will be able to make time for art if you can make it the best thing about your day. It's also possible to rewire your brain to treat art like it's a reward. In practical terms, this can be a process of finding techniques that you enjoy, spending time on subjects that you are genuinely interested in, and balancing the workflow so that you always have a face that you're looking forward to because you like that part. As an example, for me, in most paintings, that's the color edit that I love doing with every piece, and knowing that I get to do it in the end pushes me through the moments that I still have trouble enjoying as much. Building this positive feedback loop also requires that you appreciate the art that you are currently able to make. You have nothing to apologize for if you are still in the learning process. That's what art is for all of us. Even for professionals, all of us are still learning. Just showing up for your creativity and doing the work puts you already ahead of everybody that didn't. Because you have been there, you have said no to creative ideas when they appear and told that you're too busy or you have other stuff to do. But if you can find few minutes in your day to spend just a little bit pushing those projects forward, that makes you already more productive person artistically. The secret key to all of these methods is also to limit the scope of what you think of as doing art. A lot of beginners feel like they need to make an entire drawing in one sitting from start to finish. There's no rush, you guys. I have been drawing one illustration for almost a week now. I don't have the time to finish it all in one go. So before work, I draw a little bit. And when I come home from work, I get to spend a little bit of time with it. Just a few moments. It's my secret escape that I get to enjoy just a few minutes at a time and I love every second of it. When I go to sleep, I don't feel frustrated that I didn't finish it yet. I feel grateful that on top of all the things that I did today at work, I got to spend a few moments in a place that only I can access. I'm Mikko and I hope that you find new ways to enjoy art, even if it's just a few minutes at a time.